So I collected phrases and it began to seem that life is the most interesting and important word of all. It has the richest idioms, is used in the most obviously religious way. The example with which I begin life, life, concerns the death of Princess Diana in the year um, 2000, was it? When Prince Charles and the Queen both recorded short statements for television. They were keen to come across warmly, there'd been sharp critics, I don't know how big a one, I'm, I'm getting this wrong. I'm talking about the death of the Queen Mother in the year 2001. But at the time of the death of Princess Diana, there'd been criticism of the royal family for withdrawing into private grief. So the Queen and Prince Charles both recorded the public statements that were shown on television. What was striking about these statements is that despite her own personal faith, the Queen used no traditional religious language at all, but used only the word life. And Prince Charles used no traditional religious language at all, but used only the word life, though his outlook is a bit different from his mother's. Two of his uses of the word life were notably Nietzsche. What it seems has happened is that life has become our most popular totalizing word in the last 20 years. We now use it because we can't use traditional religious language in public. Let me give an example which uh, everybody will recognize in Britain. I think most of you will probably recognize here. <coughs> When a much-loved young woman dies and people want to pay tribute to her and uh, express their grief for her tragic death and so on, in England today, you would never say she loved God, but everybody says she loved life. Is that true here as well, something similar? People praise the dead for their love of life, almost universally now, but never for their love of God. To an extraordinary extent, within the last 20 or so years, the word God has been dropping out of everyday speech and the word life has been replacing it. Several professional writers have told me that this happens and I notice the word life in this strange new sense being put in inverted commas quite frequently by, for example, Virginia Woolf, 60 or 70 years ago. But the big changeover is in the last 30 years or so. By the time I got my first hundred idioms, I dug out the old Oxford English Dictionary, the great big multi-volume thing, and looked it up on life, where there are many columns, to see how many of my hundred phrases it listed. The answer was one. It was published in 1907. Amazingly, the, the shift towards life in everyday language has happened entirely in quite recent times. The only life idiom still in use now that was already in use in about 1907 when the volume on life appeared was the phrase life force, which had already been given currency by people like vitalist biologists and Bernard Shaw and so on. Life force. That was astonishing because it now seemed to me first that I was discovering something interesting about the worldview and the beliefs of ordinary people. I was also discovering something interesting about how religion is changing in our time. I also had to give some kind of history. In the life book, one bad mistake is made. I missed, through sheer negligence, the single most important statement by an early writer of the new point of view, it comes near the end of Tolstoy's War and Peace. It's Pierre's meditations when he's in captivity. Pierre says, life is everything. Life is God. To love life is to love God. Everything moves and shifts and changes together and that move, movement is God. Now, very striking indeed, for about 1860, when Tolstoy was finishing War and Peace. <clears throat> I did find some earlier very striking uses. The poet William Wordsworth, for example, is already speaking 
just a biological life or the pleasure of being alive, um, the pleasure that there is in life itself, in the poem Martin. In a very modern sounding way, about 1795 or so, Wordsworth was very innovative in that in Christian culture and coming from a strongly Anglican and Cambridge background where he shouldn't be very Platonist, he's already praising the life of sensations, the emotions and the body and talking about living, living by the heart as if he's a kind of century earlier version of D.H. Lawrence. It was in um, Henry David Thoreau, I found one or two very vivid examples of the switch to life. Do you remember when Thoreau goes into live alone in the woods of Walden in order to wrestle with life? And he's quite clearly modeling what he plans to do on Jacob wrestling alone with God by the brook uh, Kidron in Genesis. But his life he wants to wrestle with is life that he wants to tell the truth about itself. 1860s is that, I don't know it off the cuff, but uh, that's a very striking example from this side of the water. Another example from the other side, in one of his last novels, Rainbow, Lawrence has uh, one character who particularly uses the language about life in a way that's modelled on traditional talk about God. For example, seek life first which obviously shows seek ye first the kingdom of God and the teaching of Jesus. I found four such, four such phrases on one page of the rainbow. And I now began to realize that the, the word life is so short a word and so commonly used and so on, we don't notice what big changes are happening to it. What seems to have happened is that pioneering writers roughly between 1800 and 1920, are trying out these new ways of thinking. Gradually they spread to the people and have become universal. Gradually, an orientation of religious thought towards life, just the movement of human social life in this world, just ordinary everydayness, is becoming, has become universal. Another example of it spreading to philosophy, the phrase life world, life hyphen world, Edmund Husserl, 80 years ago, a good example of the word getting to philosophy, and of course, above all, Nietzsche, for phrases like life affirming, life enhancing, life denying.